Stark. You've been called the Da Vinci of our time. What do you say to that? Absolutely ridiculous. I don't paint. What do you say to your other nickname, the Merchant of Death? That's not bad. Hey, true believers, Zenglantine here. I hope you allow me this little indulgence. Now, I was going to watch all of the MCU movies anyway, so I figured, well, why don't you review and rank all of them? Now, I'm not going to do it all in one video. I want to do every individual film, and I'll do a ranking so it's easy to insert wherever I, I need uh, each movie in a list. So, once again, I hope this is successful, because then I'll just expand it to all the other movies and see where they all stand in the superhero pantheon. Anyway, enjoy. I don't want to see this on your MySpace page. Please, no gang signs. No, throw it up. I'm kidding. So when I decided to review this, of course, I thought, you know what? I've seen this a hundred times. So how am I going to approach this? It's very easy. I'm going to watch it just like that. How much does it still hold my interest? What are the strong points? What are the weak points that I see in this viewing? And try to be as honest as possible as to whether it holds up now that we've had 10 years worth of Marvel movies. In particular, as we all know and as it always has been, Robert Downey Jr. is the key to this film. A perfect marriage of character and actor. I was very surprised to find out that, once again, even though I've watched this so many times, even though this is an origin story, I wasn't bored because I was more interested in watching Tony Stark. As a matter of fact, it almost worked to its detriment where I was more interested in watching Tony Stark than I was Iron Man. Sometimes when he's in the suit and we're just seeing act action and such, I felt a little bored. And that's a strange thing to feel. Especially in a movie where you've got a guy in an armored suit taking on jet planes and the like. It just... I liked the scenes that had more dialogue. Like in that particular scene, it was more fun when he was interacting with Rhodey on the ground than it was just the action between Iron Man and the Jets. I should be dead already. Unless it was for a reason. I just finally know what I have to do. That doesn't look like a missile. What are you building, Stark? I have to admit, I was impressed that they could keep the origin. Now, granted, you know, it's war. First, he was created in Vietnam. Now it's Iraq. They managed to update it perfectly. I like the fact that also the armor, the style of the armor is kept very much looking like it did in the 1960s. And this is impressive. And his escape from the cave is one of my favorite scenes in the film, hands down. I'm working on something big. More than that, the whole learning to fly scenes, not just the learning to fly, just basically using the armor is interesting. All of the buildup seems to be far more interesting than the payoff in this movie, except for a few scenes. Now, I did find the mechanical arm assistant, I was like, really, you're going to go there? You're almost making it a cartoon by him being able to act with a, me a mechanical arm, but in the end, that's harmless. I think one of the things that makes these scenes interesting, the origin scenes, how he's created, is we already know where he is. We already know who he is. So it's not your typical origin story. It's not him finding himself. This is him being who he is, and we're going along with this journey, this awesome, wondrous journey, because he himself is excited and uh, about what he's doing, and that makes us excited about it as well. So this whole... Getting to work the armor thing absolutely is on point. As well as the attack on the Iraqi camp, the terrorist camp, I guess, if they're not naming names. It's only until they get to the jets that I was like, oh, okay, let's move along, move along, move along. But there's also something else that made me say that. We'll get to that later. See, comparing this scene to the previous, 
the one with the jets, it, this seems like somebody's in the armor. The other one was looked like a cartoon. Whether it was or not, whether it was CGI or not, I don't care. It just that's the way it looked to me. While this was visceral, the other one was done before. I've seen it, yada yada. It whatever magic it had in the beginning, over time it has lost it, in my opinion. But that's just one of a very few scenes that have. As a matter of fact, this movie suffers not from really anything to do with Iron Man or Tony Stark, even though I do like the Tony Stark scenes more than the Iron Man scenes. There's a, a big problem I think we need to address. The supporting cast. Yeah, there is a problem here. Now, I'll go through them and we'll find the problem. No, actually, even though it may just be a bit of vanity, the director putting himself into the role of Happy Hogan was a hit. I think. I think uh, John Favreau did very well as Happy Hogan. Are you kidding me? Of course the problem isn't here. I'm sorry, Jeff Bridges is hardly ever the problem in any movie, and especially here. As a matter of fact, looking back, watching this over again, they say that uh, uh, Marvel villains haven't really been all that good. Obadiah Stane is a really good villain, and he's played to perfection by Jeff... Uh, I was about to say Goldblum, Jeff Bridges. I mean, seriously, I really liked him in this role. Just awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, he, he nails this. He's... He, like I said, he just nails it. He is menacing. Now, granted, when he gets into the armor, it loses a little bit. But as Obadiah Stane, he nails it. And yes, we all saw it on Honest Trailers. And I'm going to show it to you. He is the only man to ever ride a Segway and look cool doing it. Where is he? It's inside. Terrence Howard as Rhodey. Now we're getting into a little bit of a, a troubled area. Not that he's a bad actor, mind you. He does a decent job in this role. The problem is I don't see these two being friends. I do not see any chem chemistry or real friendship between Rhodey and Tony Stark. I don't. It's not there. I'm not seeing it, and it kind of left their scenes really flat. But at least they weren't bad. Bad comes from Pepper Potts, Gwyneth Paltrow. Man, she does not belong in this movie. And here's the reason why I would say it. I don't think she wants to be in the movie. Seriously, if you watch, she just seems to be sleepwalking. I've seen Gwyneth Paltrow do well. I mean, Shakespeare in Love, she won an Oscar, and she did very well. Here, it really does feel like she just doesn't want to be there, and there is no chemistry between her and Robert Downey Jr. Oddly enough, she does have chemistry with Phil Coulson. Go figure. But I do have to mention that Phil Coulson is a different character here than what we would get in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and, you know, later Marvel movies. He's a lot more bumbling, kind of shy, uh, and he stumbles over words in this movie, and he doesn't do it later in other films. It's hard to watch a movie that you've seen a lot and just kind of critique and kind of see how it goes. And I was very happy to, to say that while I'm watching this, I enjoyed it. I wasn't just critiquing it. It took me away again. And that's really hard to do for a movie that you've seen so much. And I'm very happy to say it really does hold up. And it's appreciated. Granted, it could do with a better supporting actress, but... You know, it it didn't it wasn't so bad it ruined the movie. Anyway, what do you think? What do you think of Iron Man? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, you want to see more, click like, click share, subscribe to see more. I didn't do it then, I'll do it now. I would give this four stars out of five. Alrighty. Also, this is the way we make our living. So if you don't mind, head on over to Patreon. Links in the description below. Drop a dollar in the till. Helps keep the lights on. Help us keep uh making videos. This is the only job that I have, and I would certainly appreciate any support you could give. Also, I'd like to thank everybody who's already done that, and to everyone, all of the true believers. Thank you very, very much for watching.
part of a bigger universe. You just don't know it. Who the hell are you? Nick Fury, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. 